broadcast of Living Word Church. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, we want to uh, invite you to join us at 185 Tunis Road in McDonough, Georgia. And uh, if you need to contact us, you can go to livingwordchurch.faith and check us out, livingwordchurch.faith. If you have a testimony, you can email me at pastormoss at bellsouth.net. Pastor Moss at BellSouth.net. Now, our Sunday services are 10 o'clock Sunday morning, a.m., and Wednesday evening at 7.30 p.m. So we are excited about what God is doing here at Living Word Church. Now, I want to continue the subject on the greatest call. The greatest call, everyone is called to serve. Not everyone is called to be a pastor or an evangelist, apostle, prophet, or a teacher. But everyone is called to be a, involved in being a servant. A, a servant, uh, that means to serve, do something. As I said last time, our culture is penetrated with the message, serve me. You know, some say, what can I do to further your ministry. They'll come to a pastor, they'll come to me, they'll say, hey, what can you do to further my ministry? I always say, what are you going to do to further your ministry? The, way, the best way to further your ministry is get involved in another ministry. Get involved in the ministry. The first thing you need is a local church. You don't need to be a Lone Ranger. You need to be involved in a local church to serve in the local church. I like what Brother Hagin said this years ago. He says, uh, I'm a stickler for the local church. I'm a stickler. He, he was so much a stickler. Now, I cut my t teeth on his teachings. The first time I heard Brother Hagin put a plug in for Rhema, uh, Rhema, as of today, has over uh, uh, 112,000 Rama graduates worldwide. Amen. We are a very awesome ministry, and I'm so glad to be connected as one of the churches of Rama. And uh, if you ever move to the area of McDonough, if you call Rama and said you're looking for a church, a Rama church, they will give you this number. So we are very connected with Rama. Thank God, Ramah means the spoken word. The spoken word. But it, we all need to be involved somewhere to be involved in the local church. You know, so we have a difficult time understanding in our culture what it means to have an attitude of a servant. That means to basically serve. So being a servant does not start in what you do or how much you do. It starts by serving others. You have a want to. You have a want to. But Brother Hagen would have, um, I, I remember uh, many years ago, uh, we would uh, go to Tulsa and uh, have a camp meeting in Tulsa. That We didn't have a lot of Word of Faith churches around. A lot of churches, but not per se Word of Faith churches. And so a lot of people would travel worldwide, different places. Even the United States would go to Tulsa. And, and, and sometimes we'll have 28,000, 30,000 people there for a camp meeting. I, I've been involved in those camp meetings. And, uh, and, but, but Brother Hagen would stand up and uh, he would say, okay, we're going to send an offering to meet the expenses of these uh, services. It, it costs a lot of money to to rent out these big facilities, and, and it, it, it takes money. So we're going to receive an offering. This offering is to go toward the meeting expenses of, of, of the church, uh, uh, of the meetings here. But he said, now, if you hear, he said, do not put your tithe in this meeting. Don't put your tithe. A tithe is a 10%. Don't put your tithe. 
He said, I'm a stickler for the local church. Your tithe belongs to the Lord. Oh, yeah, these ministers, worldwide ministers, they'll tell you, yeah, you need to keep on tithing, but need to be specific. Your tithe belongs to the local church. You get mad at me if you want to, but I don't care. But I'm a stickler also with Brother Aiken. I'm a stickler. The tithe belongs to the local church. Amen. I don't go, I don't have time going all of that. Why? But the Bible teaches that. And he said, now, but he said, always, Bill, he said, I'm, I'm a stickler for the local church. And, and, and if I'm, and, and uh, let me just say this, he said this, that he's talking to uh, members, because they're going to go back, they're going to go back to their home church when they leave that camp meeting. He said, when you go back now, you'll be a sticker for that church and you'll be a blessing to your pastor. He said, if, you, if your pastor never been to a camp meeting, and, and, and get them out there. Buy, buy, buy some new suits, whatever it takes. Get them ready. Go out there to the camp meeting, out to the camp meeting. So he understood the local church. To be involved in the local church is, uh, is a high calling. A servant is one that serves others. He has a want to, to serve others. He says, I get to serve today. I get to serve. He's always going the extra mile. That's what he does. It's just in his bones, always going the extra mile. He never complains about his job or how long it serves. He's there to serve. Never, he never complained how late it's getting. He's got to get home. No, you're there to serve. They always say a captain is the last one on the ship when it goes down. Because we know a church is not going down, but leaders is always the last one to leave, usually. The department head involved. He is opposed to maintaining the status quo. He's not satisfied. I'm talking about the, the highest call, the greatest call. He's not satisfied with the status quo, uh, quo but quo. Forget the crows, we don't need them, but quos. He's always wanting to do what is right. He's wanting to do above that. You know, <laughs> he goes beyond the call of duty. He goes the extra mile. I shared my testimony in the last session. Session, I, I called it how I drive, drive 30 miles one way. I went above board because I love doing what I do. He can always be corrected. You know, amen. The, the Bible says the water is the word of God. The washing of the water by the word. The water by the word of God. Amen. I need some water, please. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. We had this all worked out. We'll get this thing all planned out. So that's what I'm going to do. If I get real thirsty, I'll give a signal. One, I'll say the word water. She's there asleep, I think. So, but, but anyway, excuse me if I drink some water. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate that. But anyway, but anyway, a, a, a servant does, does not like to be corrected. You know, I, I send out words of inspiration. Uh, I've got, uh, I've been writing these for years. The Lord gave me this talent. Uh, actually, it's a gift. I send out words of inspiration. And for people to be inspired to read these things, it blesses them. But sometimes I'll send out one that will be a word of correction. But you need to understand that you need to receive a word correction like you would inspiration. People want to be built up, inspired. They want to be built up, inspired, and, and go ahead and praise God because they've been inspired, encouraged. But you know, sometimes we just need to be corrected. A servant needs to be corrected. The Bible says the word of God is profitable. For instruction. So I cannot get off balance and just give words to inspire you, to encourage you. That's good. 
But we're living in the days that people in a good field, say something to make me feel good. Oh, I will. No matter what I say that try to make you feel good, you're not going to be, you're not going to feel good until you receive correction that needs to be corrected. You can't live in sin and feel good. And feel good. You can't live in sin and, and expect to feel good. No. We need it all. The gospel, we need all of it. A servant, one that serves Jesus, one that serves in the body of Christ, loves to be corrected. It's not easy sometimes, but it's good. It's profitable. I just sent out a word of, actually, I usually I call it a word of inspiration, but this is a word of, uh, not corruption, but a word of correction. And if we don't receive that word of correction, we'll have corruption. Talking about the bait of Satan being offended. You'd be surprised how many people that say they love God, they're offended with their brothers and their sisters. They live offended with their pastor. He didn't shake my hand when I went to church. He didn't even look at me. And they get offended over small things. But a true servant of God will not live by an offense. You know, if you would like to have my words of inspiration, and sometimes one out of ten might be a word of correction. Most of them is words of inspiration. Once in a while, we might get a word of correction, but we need it all. We need it all. If you'd like to put me, for me to put you on my mail list or my email address book to be sent out, I send out daily words of inspiration. Many have received them every day. You get a word of inspiration. And today went out a, a called a psalm of prayer. A psalm of prayer. And I sent that out today. And so if you'd like to be on that list, all you have to do is email me at pastormoss at bellsouth.net. pastormoss at bellsouth.net. And, and uh, so these are... Uh, Things I've written years ago and just last month, last year, last week. I've written two this, this week and, and the one, uh, I'll be sending out pretty quick is, is called, You are, You are not alone. You are not alone. Folks, you're not alone. God is with you. But a true servant, get back to being a servant. He ha- his attitude, he says, I get to serve. I get to usher. I get to be a, a host at the door. I get to work in the nursery. I get to work in children's ministry. I get to be on the praise team. I get to play an instrument. I get to run the sound department. I get to do this. I get to work in the bookstore. I get to do this. You don't say, well, I've got to be an usher. i got to do this. No. You have an attitude of expectation that you're excited about it. You never complain about your job, how, how long you serve. You are... Uh, uh, you, you, you are opposed to maintaining the status quo. You know, you go beyond the call of duty. You always, you can be corrected. You, you're committed in spite of all the obstacles. You, you, you are committed in, in spite of all the opposition and all the, uh, uh, of opportunities you have. You are a committed soldier of Jesus Christ. You are faithful. You are a servant and you don't make excuses why you don't show up for church. You'd be surprised all the lame excuses that people make up that they can't go to church. I, I, I'm talking to a lot of you. You might as well say amen to it. Amen. He places high value on the local church because it is God's church. Being a servant is to serve. And now a slave is one that will serve only when a force is applied by a dominating influence. That slave. But you are not forced to serve. We are not forced to serve. Amen. We want to serve God. He doesn't force you to serve Him. You have a will. With that will, you give it to God. Say, my, not my will, but thy will be done. Why is it a lot of people don't have time to serve? It's because it's called a sin of selfishness. It's not about them, it's about you. 
A slave says, those that have a slave mentality say, well, I have to serve. He won't do more than required. He's a complainer. He's in the laying out ministry. He lays out all the time. Excuses. He cannot handle correction. Do you see yourself as a servant or a slave? Being a servant starts with an attitude of the heart. It starts with an attitude of the heart. Some people need an attitude adjustment. Serving God from the heart. I remember several years ago, several years ago, the individual is not here, but that's been several years ago, maybe 15, 18 years, it's been several years ago. I remember we had a fellowship in our building over here. We have a teen center. And uh, she was one of the uh, staff members' wives. A wife, not wives, but wife. And uh, one of my ladies that was getting f- food prepared over there, we are just having a simple fellowship, I think with hot dogs and just whatever, just a few things just to get together and fellowship and, among the members. And, and it had a pretty decent crowd coming. And uh, one of my members asked her, could she, could she help? Uh, 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 could, could she help out? And, and she said, I don't do hot dogs. What a way to respond. I don't do hot dogs. In other words, I'm not going down to that level and serve. Don't you know who I am? I ain't going to do hot dogs. I, 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 I written a book uh, called Understanding the Ministry of Helps, The Greatest Call. The Greatest Call, The Ministry of Helps. In that book, I, I use this illustration without mentioning anybody's name. It says, I don't do hot dogs, so I added this in there. That's how some people's attitude is about serving. About, about serving. It says, I don't do hot dogs. But I don't do, I don't do, I don't do nursery. No, I don't do nursery. I don't do usher. I don't do sound. I don't do bookstore. I don't do the media. I don't do cameras. I, I don't do praise team. I, I, I don't do, I don't do cleaning restrooms. I, I don't do that. I don't, I don't do children's ministry. I don't do youth ministry. I don't do landscaping. I don't do evangelism. I don't, I just don't do these things. But yet I feel like I'm called to the ministry. I think you better forget the ministry. You never fulfill anything in your heart. Brother Hagin said this one time. He said, people live and die and never enter into the ministry. I've talked to several ministers over the years. M- members that was definitely called of God to ministers to preach the gospel. But yet they were so frustrated. So frustrated. Because they're not ministry. But you can't get them to do anything in the local church to serve. They see themselves out there, out there, out there preaching the gospel. But what about the flock right here in the body? What about the flock in the local church? Let's take care of the flock of God. Let's, let's minister to them. Let's, let's feed and take care of them. That's where you start. Well, my mission field, I gotta go to Africa. I had a lady tell me years, years ago, it's been my goodness. <laughs> it's back in 1980, maybe 1981. She said, Pastor, I was praying. She told me, told me this Sunday, on Sunday morning, this is in Oklahoma. I was praying, and the Lord told me to tell you to go, you're supposed to go to Africa on a mission trip. It's been all these years. I told her, I said, when the Lord tells me, I'll go. But I'm not going because you told me. He said it. He can talk to me too. 
I believe in just being plain spoken. Amen. And sure enough, sure enough, never, the Lord never told me. My mission field is here. If God called me out, sure, I believe Africa needs missionaries. I believe India needs missionaries. All these places needs places. I understand that. But you got to be led by the Spirit of God. Led by the Spirit of God. You can't be led by my spirit. I can't be led by your spirit. You got to be led by the Spirit of God. I have a lady in my church, Brenda Rivera. She's still here playing the bongos. I guess I call them bongos, drums, whatever it's bongos. I remember on a Sunday morning, I am ministering. And she was sitting on my right hand side, your left, right hand side on the front row. And when I was ministering, I stopped and pointed at her and I said, you're not supposed to leave, you're supposed to stay right here. And, and while I uh, continue ministering, I'm having this dialogue with God. I can't explain it, but I'm talking to God at the same time I'm talking to the people. I said, Lord, I don't understand. Why in the world? Why did I say that? Why did I say that? I don't understand why I said that. But I just kept on ministering. And I, I said the second time, Brenda, you're not supposed to leave. You're supposed to stay right here. And so that was the second time I said that. I, I just, I, I just, <laughs> just kept on ministering. At the end of the service, she came to me. I'm not saying God always worked this way. She came to me and says, Pastor, so you didn't know this. I was already packed up. I was wanting to move to Puerto Rico, back to Puerto Rico. I'm packed up. She said, I told the Lord this morning, if you want me to go, if you don't want me to go, you reveal it to my pastor. And she said, when you said that, I knew that was God because you knew nothing about it. And she didn't go. This been several years ago. She stayed right here. She's serving. Still playing those bongos. She's happy. She didn't want to go there. God... God changed her. I didn't know that. God will always lead that way. But God will at times. Because she said, she asked, if she never asked the Lord that, it would never happen. She said, Lord, if you don't want me to go, reveal it to my pastor. Reveal it to him. And sure enough, it was revealed. And she's here now. And I and I, I look back on that day, been years ago, I look back on that day. I wonder why, because I believe the devil had a trap for her. I believe that she could have been in one of those floods in that disaster that happened in Puerto Rico back then. I don't know, but I tell you what, it pays to be led by the Spirit of God. If you're serving God in a local church, stay put until God leads you out. Make sure God leads you out. But a lot of times people will make their own decision. Well, this is what I'm doing. Okay. What can I say? I can't go against God. But if you, feel, you believe it's God, do it. But I tell you what, we need to be involved in God's local church. If you go to another local church, and get involved. Serve in that local church. Amen. Do you see yourself as a servant or a slave? You know, when asked... When you ask to get involved, some people say, well, let me, uh, let me pray about it. If, uh, if, you, if you're in a local church and uh, uh, somebody in, in the church come to you and say, hey, you know, I'd like to get you involved. Uh, can I get you involved? I, I, need, I need some ushers. Can you, uh, I, I need help. You're not doing anything right now. Can you help me ushering? Well, they say, well, let me pray about it. Pray about it? What do you mean pray about it? Did I hear you right? Pray about it? The pastor asks you to usher, help you help him usher. You got to pray about it. Yeah, I got to pray about it. What did the Bible say in Ecclesiastes? That whatever your hands find to do, do it. He found something for you to do. Now do it. You better thank God. You have an attitude, uh, attitude to serve God if you serve God in that area. 
Amen. Something about being involved in the local, local church. We have a member here who's been coming here, I guess, about eight months now. A very precious couple been coming eight months. He's never been involved. He comes. They just come to church, sit there, hear the word of God. And I went up to him. I said, you know, I said, uh, I, I, I said, I think it'd be good for you to help us be an usher. And find out what size shirt you wear with an usher shirt. He said, what size? And I, I tell you what, he, he started ushering. And it seemed like he looks different. He, he, looks, he looks different. And uh, it's okay. He, he looks different. And uh, it's like, uh, it, it's like he uh, went to change another person. He, he just, he found his niche. But see, he got involved. But if, you, if you're in a local church and you're not asked to be involved, then get involved. If you really want to serve, go up to your pastor and say, Hey, pastor, I, I, I want to be involved. Well, I want to be involved in the church. What can I do? Now, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the highest calling. I'm talking about the highest calling. I, I would like to say, well, what do you, what do you, uh, what you, do you, do you love, uh, uh, do you love to work with children? No, I don't, I don't like work with kids. Well, I don't need you back there. <laughs> you kind of fill them out. And, and uh, you, you like, uh, do you like nursery? Oh, I love babies. I love, okay, we can use you in the nursery. And they, they feel, and they love it. So you find out where they are. Locate them. You have gifts inside of you. Find out. If you like to be a host at the door, you're a very friendly person. You like to walk up to people, shake their hand, greet them. You find your place. Because once you find your place, ask God. And God will enlighten your understanding, enlighten your eyes, and show you what to do. And you'll do it. So, Keith always said this one time, somebody, he went to a church to minister, and somebody came to him and said, hey, uh, did you use our restroom? He said, yeah, I used the restroom. He said, uh, how do you like it? Was it clean? He said, oh, yeah, it, it was real clean. And, 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 the, and the individual said, I cleaned it. I, I'm the one that cleaned it. He was so blessed that someone loved what he did. Uh, he, he's, he, he's just, I, I cleaned it. I, I cleaned it. He was so excited about the position in the restroom, making sure it's cleaned up. See, people that's serving from the heart loves to serve the heart. Amen. Well, I'm going to continue this next service. I'm going to remind you if these messages are blessing you. Once again, if you would like to be, put you on my address book, uh, my email. I won't be uh, pounding you with a bunch of stuff, requests. I'll only be sending words of inspiration to you weekly. If you want them, I, I, I send them out every day, every morning. You get words of inspiration that will inspire you, help you. I've had people say, Pastor, I needed that. It was right on time. I needed to hear that word of inspiration. Amen. So praise God. We love you. God bless you. Until next time, Jesus is Lord. Thank you for joining us at Living Word Church. Living Word Church McDonough is located at 185 Tunis Road, McDonough, Georgia, 30253. In-person services are held Sundays at 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Children's services are available every service for ages birth through 12 years old. If you would like to financially support this ministry, you can do so by using the Give Now button on our website at livingwordchurch.faith or by texting the word GIVE and the amount to 770-212-9591. Your financial donation will help us continue to support our community and do all God has called us to do. To find out more about Living Word Church, check out our website at livingwordchurch.faith. Thank you again for watching. See you next week.